The idea of a lifting body spacecraft is undeniably fascinating, so why did NASA walk away from it? After retiring the iconic space shuttle, NASA shifted to a more traditional capsule design. Why? Capsules are safer, cheaper, and more reliable, perfect for the new era of deep space missions. Following NASA's lead, giants like SpaceX and Boeing embraced capsule-style spacecraft reminiscent of the Apollo days. But not everyone is following the crowd. A bold Nevada-based startup is challenging the trend, reviving the mini-shuttle concept with a futuristic space plane called Dream Chaser. So what's driving them to resurrect this design when everyone else moved on? Dive into today's Tech Map episode to find out. With Boeing's Starliner under scrutiny for its repeated setbacks, and NASA still planning more crewed flights on it, attention in the space community is shifting toward a promising alternative, Sierra Space's Dream Chaser. The Dream Chaser is a lifting body space plane, measuring about 30 feet long and 15 feet wide. Attached to it is the 15-foot Shooting Star module, which can carry up to 7,000 pounds or over three tons of cargo inside and features three external mounts for unpressurized payloads. The crewed version of Dream Chaser is designed to transport between three and seven astronauts, along with cargo, to destinations in low Earth orbit. For comparison, Boeing's Starliner Calypso can carry up to seven astronauts, or four with 100 kilograms of cargo. As part of NASA's initiative to broaden commercial resupply services, the Dream Chaser system will conduct at least seven cargo missions to the International Space Station. These missions could last up to 75 days and deliver as much as 11,500 pounds, or five tons of cargo. The Dream Chaser is reusable and capable of returning up to 3,500 pounds, or 1.5 tons of cargo, back to Earth. Meanwhile, the Shooting Star module is designed for one-time use and burns up during re-entry allowing it to dispose of up to 8,500 pounds or nearly four tons of waste per mission. The first spacecraft in this new fleet is Dream Chaser Tenacity, marking the beginning of Sierra Space's efforts to support NASA's goals in low Earth orbit. Touted as the next generation successor to NASA's space shuttle, Dream Chaser is making a strong case for surpassing Boeing's Starliner and even the highly reliable SpaceX Crew Dragon in the race to low Earth orbit. The advantages of the lifting body design over the traditional capsule inspired the Sierra Space Team to pursue the concept. Unlike traditional capsules that typically require ocean splashdowns or designated landing zones, Dream Chaser's unique lifting body design allows it to land on public or commercial runways as short as 8,000 feet. This makes it compatible with a wide range of domestic and international airports. Dream Chaser utilizes parachutes and or rocket engines to facilitate a soft landing. In contrast, CST-100 typically descends to the ground via parachute or, in emergency scenarios, lands on water. Ground landing entails touchdown on any terrain other than a designated runway, encompassing grass fields, dirt strips, water bodies for seaplanes, or other suitable surfaces. This mode of landing necessitates specialized training and procedures due to variable conditions and the absence of established infrastructure compared to traditional runways. In stark contrast, runways serve as meticulously prepared and designated surfaces at airports, specifically engineered for aircraft takeoffs and landings. Typically constructed with asphalt or concrete, Runways are outfitted with markings, lighting, and navigational aids to facilitate pilot guidance during landing and takeoff maneuvers. Opting for runway landings ensures a predictable and controlled environment for aircraft operations, mitigating the inherent risks associated with touchdown on unprepared surfaces. The result is improved reusability and greater operational efficiency, enabling quicker turnaround times between missions. Just as importantly, this runway landing capability allows for immediate access to both sensitive cargo and crew, 
an advantage for time-sensitive scientific experiments or in the event of a medical emergency. Once on the ground, experiments can be rapidly transported to nearby facilities, like the Space Station Processing Facility, where research teams are ready to begin analysis. While SpaceX's Cargo Dragon 2 has improved its return time significantly, it still requires helicopter transport from a recovery ship, a process that takes longer than simply rolling Dream Chaser into a hangar right off the runway. Another major strength of Dream Chaser lies in its low-G re-entry profile, which subjects both cargo and crew to less stress compared to the steeper re-entry angles of capsules. This makes it ideal for transporting delicate scientific materials or equipment that could be damaged by the more intense forces of traditional re-entry. It also reduces structural and thermal stress on the spacecraft itself. This runway landing ability is made even more practical by Dream Chaser's use of non-toxic propellants and standardized systems, eliminating the need for special recovery equipment. Combined with its flexibility to deorbit and land on virtually any orbit, it becomes a highly adaptable and efficient solution for ongoing low Earth orbit missions. The ability to land virtually anywhere in the world also enhances opportunities for international collaboration. Most critically, as Sierra Space completes work on its human-rated version of the Dream Chaser, this capability could prove life-saving, giving astronauts a way to return home quickly in the event of a serious in-flight medical emergency. In terms of how much cargo they can carry, SpaceX says its Cargo Dragon 2 spacecraft is built to transport up to six tons to the ISS and bring back up to three tons to Earth. Sierra Nevada Corporation, on the other hand, claims that its Dream Chaser space plane will be able to deliver as much as 5.5 tons to the ISS. What's more significant, however, is that Dream Chaser will dock using a larger berthing port and will offer more internal space and volume for cargo which could make it easier for SNC to fully utilize its payload capacity. In contrast, Cargo Dragon 2 has never launched with even 60% of its maximum payload due to its limited volume. For NASA, being able to fully tap into a spacecraft's potential payload capacity can make each cargo mission more cost-effective. While SpaceX has the edge in experience when it comes to thermal protection systems, Dream Chaser's heat shield is said to be both stronger and lighter than earlier designs. It also meets requirements for microorbital debris protection, ensuring it can safely re-enter the atmosphere, land, and perform runway landings for both cargo and future crewed missions. Dream Chaser's thermal protection system is built to handle temperatures as high as 1,650 degrees Celsius. The space plane features about 2,000 thermal protection system tiles that wrap around its sides, top, bottom, and even over various control surfaces. Because of the Dream Chaser's curved and uniquely shaped body, each tile must be precisely shaped to fit perfectly without any gaps. These tiles average about 10 inches by 10 inches, making them larger than those used on other spacecraft such as Dragon, which simplifies installation and reduces the total number needed. Still, not all tiles are the same. Along the line where the black and white tiles meet, there are many small, triangular, and uniquely shaped pieces, contributing to the complexity and length of the installation process. One interesting design element is the dual color scheme of the tiles, black and white. The white tiles help reflect solar heat while in orbit, keeping the internal components cooler. However, during atmospheric re-entry, the tiles are exposed to superheated air and heat up rapidly regardless of color. Black surfaces, while they absorb more radiant heat, are also more efficient at shedding that heat. This is likely why the shuttle tiles are black. They radiate away the heat they absorb more quickly. The SNC team carefully took advantage of the specific properties of these two tile types placing them strategically across the spacecraft's surface for optimal thermal performance. To keep the tiles attached, Dream Chaser uses a room temperature vulcanizing silicone adhesive, which is capable of withstanding high temperatures. 
Building on the experience of NASA's shuttle program, the SNC team believes that their updated tiles reflect advances in technology and incorporate valuable lessons learned from the past. For some, Dream Chaser's biggest advantage over SpaceX Starship is its potential for point-to-point -point travel on Earth, eliminating the need for a large support structure like Mechazilla. While that's partially true, it's important to understand that Dream Chaser is no match for Starship in terms of overall capability. Its payload capacity is limited to about 5 tons, making it more suitable for transporting lighter cargo. Even with its promising features, the reality is that Dream Chaser is still in development and has encountered a few setbacks along the way. As of now, SpaceX's Dragon remains the only spacecraft in the world that can regularly return significant amounts of cargo from space to Earth. Sierra Space's first Dream Chaser mission to the International Space Station is currently scheduled for no earlier than May 2025. Initially, the company aimed for a launch last summer aboard United Launch Alliance's new Vulcan rocket. However, ULA postponed the flight to prioritize certifying the Vulcan Centaur rocket for U.S. military missions. The mission, called SSC Demo-1, will send the Tenacity Dream Chaser to the ISS as part of NASA's Commercial Resupply Services II contract. In 2016, NASA competitively selected Sierra Nevada Corporation's SNC Space Systems to receive a multi-year contract to provide cargo delivery, return, and disposal services for the International Space Station. SNC received a Commercial Resupply Services II CRS-2 contract to fulfill a minimum of six cargo delivery service missions to and from the ISS utilizing SNC's Dream Chaser cargo system. It's been a long road for Dream Chaser's first trip to space. Based on NASA's space shuttle and Soviet-era designs, it was an early participant in NASA's commercial crew program, albeit under previous companies SpaceDev and then Sierra Nevada Corp. Dream Chaser was not selected for commercial crew after SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing Starliner were chosen in the final round in 2014. SNC later filed a protest with the U.S. Government Accountability Office that was overturned after the office found no issues with the evaluation. But Sierra Space's work with NASA was not over. In 2016, as mentioned, the spacecraft was selected under a Commercial Resupply Services II contract from NASA, tasking at least six flights to the ISS. SpaceX and Orbital ATK, now part of Northrop Grumman, also received funding for their Dragon and Cygnus vehicles, respectively. Sierra Space describes itself as a leading commercial space company at the forefront of innovation and the commercialization of space in the orbital age building an end-to-end -end business and technology platform in space to benefit life on Earth. With more than 30 years and 500 missions of spaceflight heritage, the company is reinventing both space transportation with Dream Chaser, the world's only commercial space plane, and the future of space destinations with the company's inflatable and expandable space station technology.